If there's one thing that audiences expect from a horror movie, it's death. The genre is entirely intertwined with morbid demises, frequently turning human non-existence into popcorn-munching entertainment. And while nobody's surprised when a douchebag gets split in two by the axe-wielding psychopath right after mouthing off about how he could totally take him, there are nevertheless movies which set up characters to die in distinctive and unique ways. Whether it's an insurmountable hurdle, committing an irredeemable sin, or getting to a suspiciously happy ending, we all knew that these movie characters had a grim death awaiting them, even if they didn't. These are the moments which made it clear these characters would not be getting a happy ending, but rather a grim death signposted in beaming neon. I am the sign spinner, Ash from What Culture Horror, and these are the 10 exact horror movie moments you knew characters were screwed. 10. The Behemoth Arrives The Mist Frank Darabont's The Mist is a masterfully bleak adaptation of Stephen King's short story, yet given the film's standing as a multiplex sci-fi horror, audiences were nevertheless expecting protagonist David and his son Billy to make it out in one piece. But alas, Darabont had other plans entirely. Near the end of the movie, moments after discovering his wife dead and his house destroyed, David and a small group of fellow survivors drive their car through the mist, only to come across a gigantic Lovecraftian monster. It is a jaw-dropping moment that's equal parts beautiful and terrifying, but more than anything else, it is the turning point at which David and his friends lose all hope of survival, and we as audience members know it too. It's not much longer before the group agrees to a suicide pact in order to be spared a worse fate. And so, David kills the other survivors, as well as his own son, only to discover moments later that the military is starting to win the fight against the monsters. Brutal. David may have technically survived the events of the movie, but he was spiritually defeated in the most thorough way possible. And let's be honest, does anyone really think he lived much longer after the end credits rolled? Screwed entirely. 9. Burke tries to kill Ripley and Newt Aliens Aliens' is Burke is one of the most detestable characters in the horror genre, an almost impossibly sleazy Wayland Yutani executive who joins Ripley and the Colonial Marines on their mission to Hadley's Hope, albeit with nefariously ulterior motives in mind. Granted, Burke being a weaselly stuffed shirt was probably enough to seal his fate here, but he guaranteed beyond all doubt he was going to end up on a xenomorph's dinner plate when he attempted to smuggle a specimen back through quarantine by locking Ripley and Newt in a room with two face huggers. Though the Marines make every effort to rub out Burke themselves, he soon finds himself cornered and presumably killed by a xenomorph. A deleted scene, however, shows Ripley finding Burke in an alien cocoon, after which she hands him a grenade. Either way, plotting to murder the movie's beloved protagonist was a sure, now you've gone and done it moment if there ever was one. 8. Lewis uses the Pet Cemetery a third time. Pet Cemetery. Few horror movie protagonists have been hoisted by their own petard quite as successfully as Lewis Creed, the hero of the 1989 Pet Cemetery adaptation. After Lewis uses the ancient burial ground behind his house to revive the family's dead cat, albeit as an empty, zombie-like husk, his son Gage is killed in a car accident. A grieving Lewis then uses the burial ground again in order to bring Gage back from the dead, against the advice of local eccentric Judd, reanimated as a murderous shadow of his former self. Near the film's end, Gage kills Judd and Lewis's wife, Rachel, prompting Lewis to kill the resurrected version of his son. And while that probably should be the end of the story, Lewis decides to use the pet cemetery one more time in an attempt to bring Rachel back to life. To the surprise of absolutely no one, the final scene of the movie sees Lewis reunited with a grotesque revenant version of his wife, who promptly grabs a knife and presumably stabs him to death as the film ends. You can maybe forgive the guy for bringing his dead son back while in the throes of grief, but repeating that terrible life decision confirmed he was destined for the chopping block. 7. David tries to shoot Sean. Sean of the Dead. As much as Edgar Wright's Sean of the Dead isn't a massively serious zombie film, it is nevertheless a genuinely tense and character-driven entry into the genre. And while much of the film has an anything-goes approach, by far the least likable of the central group is David, the pretentious, miserable man with clear designs on Sean's partner Liz. But David goes past the point of redemption late in the movie, when after being socked in the face by Sean, he responds by trying to shoot Sean dead, much to the group's horror. Barely a minute later then, David gets his well-earned comeuppance, as zombies break into the pub and quickly tear him to pieces. Apparently, Wright originally had David apologise for pulling a gun on Sean, but ultimately decided it was scarier for his death to come suddenly without any catharsis. And the end result is perhaps the most satisfying death in the entire movie. 
6. Carter drops an N-bomb, the final destination Though the majority of the characters in the Final Destination franchise are meat shields who exist solely to be destroyed in a myriad of creatively gnarly ways, the fourth movie's racist tow truck driver Carter Daniels earned himself the primest of prime spots on death's list. Just minutes after the opening speedway accident, Carter drops an N-bomb whilst addressing fellow survivor George Lanta, in turn ensuring he won't be making it to the end of the movie, or really anywhere near. Hilariously, Death wastes no time at all giving the racist a suitably grisly demise, as in the film's very next scene, his attempt to burn a cross on George's lawn is scuppered when he gets dragged off, set on fire, and exploded by his own runaway tow truck. Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy, clearly. Even accepting the basement low expectations audiences have for the survival prospects of Final Destination characters, Carter basically committed an act of cinematic suicide by outing himself as a weapons-grade asshole. 5. The Bullies Attack Oscar in the Pool – Let the Right One In Let the Right One In is one of the greatest vampire films of all time, focused on the story of Oscar, a bully 12-year-old boy who makes friends with Ellie, a vampire child. A group of bullies torment Oscar over the course of the film, and though with Ellie's encouragement he fights back against them, things come to a dangerous head at the very end of the movie, as the bullies make one more strike against him. At the school's swimming pool, the leader of the gang threatens to stab Oscar's eye out if he doesn't hold his breath underwater for three minutes. Even though Ellie supposedly took leave of Oscar the previous evening, we as audience members know she's about to return in a major and majorly violent way. Moments later, Oscar is rescued from the bullies by Ellie, who swoops in and brutally murders all but one of the group, paying off an entire movie's worth of relentless torment. I mean, I'm not saying they deserve to be dismembered by a vampire, but well, they were kind of asking for it, in a horror movie, at least. 4. Marcus Returns to the Farmhouse – The Last Exorcism this criminally underappreciated found footage film follows Cotton Marcus, a reverend who makes a living performing fake exorcisms on supposedly possessed people. He spends most of the movie investigating the case of timid farm girl Nell Sweetser, whose father believes she is possessed by Satan. Marcus ultimately seems satisfied that he has exposed Nell's apparent possession later in the movie, her behaviour actually a result of her deep shame at becoming impregnated by a local boy. But just as the film appears to wrap up, Marcus learns that the apparent father of the child is gay and barely knows Nell, prompting Marcus and the film crew to take a last-minute detour back to the farmhouse, where they discover a satanic birthing ritual taking place. Because horror movies love downer endings, there was no way anything good was going to come back from heading to that farmhouse. But really, the exact moment we knew this was going to go tits up was as soon as it opened in found footage. 3. Christian Joins the Sex Ritual Midsummer. Sex resulting in death is one of the oldest horror tropes there is, albeit one which received a uniquely effed up treatment in Ari Aster's deeply disturbing horror film Midsummer. Much of the film is focused on the crumbling relationship between recently bereaved young woman Danny and her uncommunicative, distant partner Christian. The pair nevertheless travel together with Christian's friends to a remote Swedish commune to partake in their midsummer celebrations, which soon enough turn murderously violent. Christian is an emotionally unavailable douche for most of the movie, but what ensures he has no chance of leaving the commune alive is his taking part in an orgy intended to impregnate one of the locals. Now, to be clear, Christian is absolutely a victim himself too, because he was drugged into compliance before joining in this sex ritual. But Danny catching him in the act is ultimately what tips her over the edge later, when she picks Christian to be the commune's final ritual sacrifice in the film's grim closing sequence. 2. Don abandons his wife 28 Weeks Later 28 Weeks Later opens with an intense, nerve-shredding opening set piece, where Don, his wife Alice, and a group of fellow survivors find their tranquil rural getaway attacked by a fleet of the infected, with Don eventually abandoning his wife to the Horde to flee. Now, Don's act was completely believable, even reasonable under the circumstances. He had nowhere else to go, and his chances of survival were extremely low if he stayed to fight. But this act also represents his original sin, if you like, and damn near ensures he'd end up dead before the film's end, whether in an act of redemption or not. Don has quite the roller coaster ride to the grave, though. For starters, Alice is actually discovered alive and found to be an asymptomatic carrier of the rage virus. But when Don is reunited with her and gives her a big old kiss, she transmits the rage virus to him, at which point he becomes infected, turns rabid, and slaughters her. He's finally put out of his murderous misery by his own daughter, Tammy. Don's arc throughout the film is undeniably tragic, but leaving his wife in that opening scene guaranteed he was never getting out of this thing in one piece. 
One, Rex drinks the coffee, The Vanishing. And finally, we have the legendary 1988 Dutch horror masterpiece, The Vanishing, a gut-wrenchingly suspenseful film in which a man, Rex, obsessively searches for his partner Saskia after she disappears from a rest stop. Three years later, kidnapper Raymond makes contact with Rex, and in the film's haunting climax, tells Rex he will explain to him what happened to Saskia, but only if he agrees to drink drugged coffee and experience exactly what she did. Rex, consumed by an obsessive desire to learn what happened to his love, finally relents. We as the audience are practically screaming at the screen at this point, well aware that Rex is not coming out of this alive. And duly, he wakes up from his drugging inside a pine box, buried alive in much the same fashion that Saskia presumably was. Terrifying, but psychologically fascinating and somewhat relatable, even if most of us surely would not drink from that damn coffee. And that's our list. What are the horror movie moments all but sealed characters' fates? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. I've been Ash over on social media at Ash Millman, and this has been What Culture. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and come back again soon for some more spine tingling horror content. Thanks for watching.